Good evening, everyone, or good afternoon, good morning, uh, depending where you are in the world, I guess. My name's Scott Williams, and um, I'm coming to you from Ballarat in southeastern Australia, where it's um, just coming into winter and starting to get a bit cold, as you may be able to tell from the fire in my background. Uh, I'm presenting this talk on Wool 2030, a vision for Australian wool growing on behalf of Russell Pattinson, uh, the consultant um, with whom uh, uh, I developed this particular strategy, and also Australian Wool Innovation Limited, who, um, who funded its development, commissioned Russell and I to, uh, to do the plan. I'd like to talk tonight a bit about the background to the plan. I'd like to talk about how we identified the priorities, so that the, the process, the approach we went through to, to garner industry input into it. I'd like to talk to you a bit about the plan itself and the content, and also just a little bit about the implications and, um, and what it means to the value chain. So firstly, the background. The development of a wool grower plan was a recommendation of Ernst & Young, and it arose from a performance review of Australian wool innovation that was conducted in 2018. Now, that, these performance reviews are a normal part of the cycle for rural research and development corporations in Australia. Um, but one of those recommendations from EY was that um, there needed to be a plan that sat over and above the uh, AWI strategic plan and which sort of brought in all of those things that um, an industry would need to do to meet its preferred future. Uh, in the absence of a plan like that, of course, then the AWI strategic plan tends to become the de facto industry plan. Uh, but the problem with that is it doesn't embrace um, some of those things like industry advocacy and so on that aren't the role of AWI. So AWI facilitated and funded the development of the plan. Um, it's important to say though that the plan is owned by wool growers and, and to the credit of AWI, um, it, it commissioned this and, and run this project very much at arm's length with, with uh, very good contribution to it, very um, positive input, um, but it certainly did not seek to assert its own opinions too much. Uh, we also had input from all parts of the value chain and I'll talk a little bit about that in a moment. Um, but again, important to recognise that this is, this is something that's owned by wool growers. It's not owned by AWI or any other body. So how did we go about identifying the priorities? Well, firstly, the plan was overseen by AWI's wool grower consultation group. Now, this is a group um, representing about 30 wool grower and stud breeder and related bodies um, from around Australia. Now, AWI, to its credit, I think this was a really good idea, uh, insisted that each of the representatives on the WCG uh, invite along a next-gen participant to assist in the development of the plan. So these were people who were generally in their 20s or their 30s, up-and-coming leaders. And, uh, and, and Russell and I, I know, found it very valuable to have their input because they, it's a different generation. They tend to have a different perspective and a lot less baggage about where the industry is heading. The WCG met several times by video conference during 2020. It was meant to be a lot of face-to-face -face meetings, but of course we had COVID, so we very rapidly had to change our plans. Um, but these meetings included five to discuss key strategic themes. And uh, these are those themes, the wool supply and demand, flock demographics and productivity, social license issues, opportunities and threats, and people in the wool industry. So we developed some discussion papers, one around each of these themes. Um, these were reviewed by the, the WCG. We had a guest speaker come on and, and speak to them. And then we explored the issues in them for an hour and a half. Uh, and I think that was a very good foundation for sort of exploring all those strategic issues that needed to be uncovered and explored um, and dealt with in the plan. AWI established a dedicated project microsite for the, for the project to develop the plan, um, 2030.wool.com. That's actually still there. So if you'd like to go on and have a look at the plan, that's probably the best place to find it. Um, the, the microsite gave us uh, a place to put those discussion papers, to put drafts of the plan, to provide an update for those who are following the process, um, to let people know how to become involved. Um, and it also provided a link to an online survey that we set up and uh, which we ran over a period of weeks and which attracted 850 responses, which for us was quite a remarkable um, response to that, to that survey. And we ended up with a heck of a lot of data. It was certainly a huge data analysis job. 
um, but terrific information to underpin what we put in the plan. We also had a number of online discussions with a range of interested groups, including the wool brokers, private treaty merchants, exporters, processors, other service bodies, so AWI, but also the Australian Wool Exchange and, and the Australian Wool Testing Authority, uh, Animal Health Australia, um, and also a number of leadership development groups that there are in the industry. So for example, the Nuffield Scholars, um, who are primary producers who were given the opportunity to, to travel the world and find out more about particular areas of the of the, the, their business, um, such as supply chain relationships or sustainability issues. Um, and again, they provided very good input to the process. Uh, Russell and I and um, several of the WCG members also attended the Schneider Woolconnect conference um, in October, I think it was. Um, and that also was actually a fantastic opportunity to, to gather intelligence for the plan. Uh, a great opportunity to hear from downstream players in the industry, customers of the, of the industry, larger players, um, non-governmental organisations as well. Uh, we found that uh, a terrific opportunity to really get our heads around uh, what the market was saying. And finally, the draft plan was extensively circulated for comment before finalisation, and that included uh, going through AWI's offices in Western Europe and the US and other places. Um, so we believe that overall it was a very it was a very inclusive process, very consolidated process, and uh, we believe we got a, a pretty good grip on what the industry was looking for. So the plan itself. Well, firstly the vision, the vision of the plan, and this was this was the you know the overarching theme that came through time and again. The world's premium sustainable fibre, Australian wool, the ultimate assurance of sustainability, natural, renewable, recyclable, and biodegradable. So these virtues, these attributes of wool generally, but you know, Australian wool in particular, um, just kept coming to the fore and kept, kept reminding us that that, that that is what wool is about. It's about sustainability. It's about those, you know, those ethical attributes and we had to really put those up in lights. The core themes that, that you'll find running through the plan if you find a, a chance to sit down and read it, is firstly an unrelenting focus on sustainability. Uh, it's, it involves the careful management of our animals, the land they occupy, the well-being of our wool growers, and the wool grow and the well-being of our customers. Um, pursuit of excellence in the raw material we produce. Um, there's no doubt about it. Wool is a premium fibre. Uh, it needs to tick all the boxes in terms of um, an excellent product. Pipeline profitability to drive investment and innovation on farm and in the development of new wool products. If we don't have profitability in the industry, then those things won't won't occur. Um, this sentiment about the development of new wool products came through very strongly from a lot of the people who responded to the survey. Uh, the Australian wool industry has a proud and long record of producing new and innovative products and clearly this has to continue. And the final one, which was also again a very strong theme, was around enhanced communication with our customers and better meeting their expectations. Uh, we've seen how, you know, in the last decade or two, um, uh, the sort of constraints that were always traditionally associated with the wool industry around the length of the pipeline and the multiple uh, processing stages and the, and the sort of disjointed nature of sending price signals and, and, and other signals up and down the pipeline um, have, have potentially held the industry back. But there are new technologies now, new ways of communicating that mean we can get around that. And there are also new stories to tell, new attributes to talk about in the fibre. And, uh, and again, that was a very strong theme coming through in the strategic plan. So we've organised the plan into five pillars. The first one is caring for our animals and the environment. The second one is about marketing the world's most desirable fibre. The third one, communicating with our customers, as I've just discussed. The fourth, transforming our production systems through innovation. And pillar five, fostering a prosperous wool growing community. So I'd just like to speak to each of those pillars um, in brief to give you a sense of what's in the plan. We used quite a lot of sort of futuring techniques in this plan. We've got a couple of stories in there from told by wool growers who, who are in 2030 about how they run their businesses, how they relate to the world and the market and everything else. And we've got a statement against each of these pillars which sort of summarises where the industry is in 2030 if it's met, if it's been successful in, in delivering against these strategies. And under this particular pillar, 
We've said in 2030, wool is one of Australia's most trusted industries, renowned for its stewardship of the people, animals and environment in its care. As a textile farmer, Australian wool is recognised internationally for its sustainability standards, which are underpinned by rigorous certification. So the sorts of strategies we have in this pillar, continuously improve animal welfare, protect our sheep against fly strike, which is of course, you know, continues to be one of the major welfare challenges for us. Protecting our sheep against other endemic and exotic health risks. So preparing for, you know, heaven forbid and touch wood, foot and mouth disease or something like that to come in. Strive for carbon neutrality of wool production. Again, a very strong theme. And also leaving our agri-systems in better condition with every passing year. So this is, this is a nod to the, you know, the growing international movement and support for things like regenerative agriculture. And, and that is the key sentiment behind that whole philosophy is, is about improving our land from year to year um, rather than mining it. The second pillar is about marketing the world's most desirable fibre. And here our statement is that in 2030, the industry has renewed its relationship with consumers following the COVID-19 pandemic. Consumers understand that Australian wool delivers comfort, boosts health and positively benefits animals and the environment. So here we're talking about promoting the unique benefits of wool, developing innovative wool products, as we discussed, building existing and new markets for wool products, maintaining and building the reputation of the wool mark, which remains one of the key assets for Australian wool growers, ensuring access to key markets, and, uh, and a very particular strategy there about developing a COVID-19 recovery plan, because it became quite clear as the, as the, the year continued last year that COVID um, was going to inflict a fair bit of pain on the industry for all of us. Pillar three is about communicating with our customers. In 2030, growers, consumers and industry participants in between are seamlessly exchanging data on product attributes, including provenance, physical movements and price signals, enabling growers to meet market requirements and buyers to readily obtain the wools they seek. So again, this is what I spoke about before. It's about this joined up value chain where everyone understands um, the attributes and the, and, the, and the price determinants and so on of the industry. Our first strategy here is to assist growers to better understand customer requirements. The second one is about increasing the efficiency of pipeline data management and the range of specifications that are communicated. And again, this includes things like provenance, this includes things like heritage, um, it includes those sort of <clears throat> That things that aren't around physical attributes, but perhaps more about sustainability or ethical attributes or, or other things that consumers want to hear about when they're buying a product. Facilitate the sale of wool based on raising claims. Increase marketing options for growers. And finally, increase the uptake of price risk management tools, which you know, has, has historically been an area that of, uh, where there hasn't been great uptake in Australia. Pillar four is about transforming our production systems through innovation. And here we've said in 2030, wool production systems employ a wide range of integrated technologies that make wool growing less labour intensive, more efficient and more appealing to a younger generation. Wool growers are highly skilled managers of sheep, pastures and data. Now this reflects, of course, the technological, um, the, the data, the digital revolution that is sweeping through agriculture um, around the world, not just in Australia. And also this repositioning of wool growers as being more than people who go out in the paddocks and get their hands dirty. They manage data, they manage a whole lot of information, they spend as much time in the office um, as they do in the paddock. And this is important for a couple of reasons. One is around reducing labour intensivity. Um, another one is about appealing to a younger generation. And we know that a lot of the younger generation don't see many of the agricultural industries as very sexy or very advanced or very technologically savvy. Um, we need to reposition that because it simply won't be true into the future. Um, this will be a very dynamic and, uh, and very uh, technologically enabled industry. So the strategies here include continuously improving product quality in line with customer needs, developing or adapting new technologies to increase sustainability and efficiency. So things like digital technologies, remote sensors, drones, automation, robotics, all those sorts of things. Improving the performance of wool sheep, genetics, for example, uh, which still has a very strong part to play. Improving the way wool is harvested and, distribu and distributed. Reducing the threat of predators, which continue to be uh, a major issue for large parts of Australia, particularly feral dogs. 
and increasing the resilience of wool growing systems to climate and other risks. Of course, another emerging area. You know, how do we manage the impact of droughts and fires and all that side of things and make, um, and make wool enterprises um, more resilient in the face of those changes? And pillar five is the people pillar. It's about fostering a prosperous and wool growing community. In 2030, the wool growing community in Australia is cohesive, collaborative and committed, speaking with one voice. Wool growers are skilled professionals who understand their markets and manage complex production systems. Young people are enthusiastic new entrants. So again, a big overlap there with that innovation pillar that we had uh, in pillar four. The strategies here are around developing the skills of industry participants, gearing them up for these new technologies, these new skills that are going to be required um, to effectively and efficiently run a wool growing enterprise, to promote pride and succession in the industry, build a collaborative industry, to advocate for the wool industry, to make sure that wool's interests um, are represented around the table. And finally, of course, improve health and safety, which is always a key consideration in agriculture. There are a number of targets in this plan, the overarching one of which is a growth in value of 2.5% annually over the next decade. Um, growers um, in, in the survey and in our one-on-one -on -one consultations um, felt that it was important for the industry to start to grow at least modestly um, because if it continued to shrink and as you know since about 1990 we've had the flock size come down dramatically from over 180 million sheep um, that it's important to stabilise that so that the industry doesn't become a cottage industry. So that growth in value of 2.5% annually um, we see coming from an increase in value per head of sheep of 15% um, and an increase in flock size from about 67 to 75 million, um, which includes stabilisation of the proportion of merinos in the ewe flock, which is currently around 68%. Um, and that has come down you know, fairly significantly over the years as we've seen more prime lamb production come into the, uh, the Australian sheep flock. Um, there's a view that we need to maintain that, that extremely valuable merino base um, at around about that 68%. There's also a series of intermediate targets that under, underpin that growth in value. And um, if you have a look at the plan, you might be interested to have a look at those targets. So what are the implications of the plan? Well, the first point to make is that Wool 20 is the first strategic plan to be developed for Australian wool growers. There have always been AWI strategic plans and various other plans, but there hasn't been one that sort of signals the overall intent of the Australian wool growing industry. We think it provides clear strategic direction for wool growers, um, for their value chain partners and also service providers over the next 10 years. There are some very clear themes, um, as I hope I've, I've got across um, in my talk tonight. Um, these, these themes around sustainability, around communication you know, along the industry, around innovation, around attracting young people, all those things are really quite clear. It also sends a very strong signal, we think, to the market that meeting customers' expectations is the top priority of Australian wool growers. Um, that came through very clearly um, and we hope that that's been signalled very much in the plan. Um, I'll finish by inviting you to have a look at the plan. Um, we hope that you'll find it um, interesting. We hope that you'll find it relevant and that it hits the mark. And so I'll just repeat that, um, that microsite that I mentioned before, 2030.wool.com, it's still there. You can still access the plan. Um, if for some reason it's not, if you look at the Australian Wool Innovation website, um, you'll certainly find the plan there. Thank you for listening to me tonight. Um, I hope the rest of the IWTO conference goes well. And, uh, and I'll bid you farewell.